course on Lake Champlain, and he hopes to complete his certificate soon. He loves to make movies. He talks about movies. He'll tell you what the best movie is and the, and the best, cin best cinematography. He's written a movie review column for two local newspapers in Vermont. Eric has been accepted by his family and friends, and he's adored his whole life because of this he has thrived. And now he's passionate about the passing, passing the values of acceptance on. Paying it forward, if you will. An opportunity to ask all of us to accept rather than tolerate people with autism. Eric is learning me meditation, and he's working on a film about how meditation can help people with autism. You can see more about Eric's unique and valuable perspectives, and I've studied and looked at his uh, YouTube videos on uh, Raid, Raid Master Prod. His YouTube videos are spectacular, and the work that he's done on film. But I think uh, when we hear from Eric, you're going to realize that don't judge someone with autism. Um, don't put them in a category, and don't ever limit their possibilities. I'd like to introduce you to Eric Nunn. History, especially in these recent times, we have heard about we have heard about tolerance as a way to combat prejudice. It does seem like a noble thing to do, unless you look up the key word tolerance. If I look up tolerance on the dictionary app on my MacBook, one of the descriptions I find, and I quote, is to endure with forbearance. So in reality, when we tolerate each other's differences. We are doing just that, tolerating, without any understanding or knowledge of why this of why this person is different. And I know that is not the road to peace. And I must confess something. I too am guilty of this, of this tolerance. Of the, the civil rights leaders of 50 years past knew it, knew it 100% whether it be Dr. Martin Luther King of America or Nelson Mandela of South Africa. But, back during their time, the news handled news as that. News. Back during your time. Times. Remember the good old days? Days in which they handled news simply as news. And while to concrete, need I say no more. <laughs> Fast forward to the present era, you should think that a generation raised by honest newsmen and women will continue the tradition of honest newcasting. As one may tell by the over-sensationalized news of doom and gloom, which barely scrapes the surface of the recent man-made disaster, the answer is no. Look no further than the terrorist attack in Charleston, South Carolina. There, no one got the big picture mark until John Stewart of The Daily Show so talked about it and said, no jokes. How does this relate to tolerance? Because with this new generation of newscasters, I feel that we have become immature in terms of morality, only promoting tolerance in a culture which, which constantly seeks to blame without decent thought or respect. You might know some of these newscasters without me mentioning them. In fact, in an episode of South Park, which, which some of you might view as a, as a rude cartoon on Comedy Central, it actually parodies this culture of blame and petulance in which, in which the lewd acting transsexual Mrs. Garrison, who has been acting up so she, so she so she or he could get fired and sue the school, he ends up winning an award for co courage, and at his acceptance speech, he states that he, he states that, that to tolerate something doesn't mean you have to approve it. And he goes on to, me, to state that the Museum of Tolerance, of which he is accepting his, his award, should be retitled the Museum of Acceptance. That brings us to the main point of my speech, the idea of acceptance over tolerance. 
You see, with tolerance, we're only tolerating the differences in our cultures, but our grudges of those differences will, will always remain. I have admitted previously in the speech that I too am guilty of this. Guilty of this, especially with, with some of my roommates. It's past and now. <laughs> But anyways, we, we force ourselves to bear with things that the, the, that the majority finds annoying, like bratty, eye-rolling teenagers. No offense to those teens out there. <laughs> While there are some annoying things that do have to be eliminated, anyone can tell you that, believe me. But things like the takes of an autistic person trying to get his mind together, are things that have to be there for the benefit of that one person. Things, for example, that when that when I'm in a daily speech, sometimes I sometimes I ended up saying things like that's my way of getting my brain back in the track. In my mind, this shouldn't be tolerated. It should be accepted. The media of today has rendered our levels of judgment to that of short-sighted simpletons. And the sword of judgment is a double-edged sword, one, should, one that should be used by the most mature hands. And yes, more people can become more worthy to wield this sword of justice if we cut this tolerance crap, pardon my term, because that's what it is. Crap! Once and for all, and instead focus on more accepting of accepting who all of us are. Whether it, whether it be black or white, autistic or neurotypical, it does not matter. But what that is what civil rights icons such as Dr. King, Mohandas Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and of course our Pope Francis, to name just a few, would have wanted. For all Crees, not to tolerate our difference and not to make, the di to make the divide worse over time, but to accept and unite all the people as those who wrote the words, all men are created equal, upon the Declaration of Independence over two centuries ago would have wanted. And that, my friends, is a road to peace and progress in our chaotic world of today. Thank you.